Standard Chartered and CNBC TV 18 present India on the Move Season 4. Hello and welcome to Season 4 of India on the Move exclusively on CNBC TV 18. I'm Ridhu Bhandari. According to a Knight Frank report that came out in early 2020, the ultra high net worth individual population of India is expected to grow by about 73% in the next five years. But that, of course, was before COVID-19 struck us. During the course of the year, wealth creation, wealth preservation have changed drastically. How have wealth managers been coping with this economic crisis and hand-holding their clients through it? What are the big lessons that we are learning from the pandemic and what are the silver linings? Those are some of the questions that we are aiming to answer here today on the Wealth Management Special of India on the Move. Let me welcome my panel of eminent experts, Samrat Khosla, MD and Head of Wealth Management India at Standard Chartered Bank, Rajesh Saluja, CEO and MD of ASK Wealth Advisors, Vikram Hosangari, Partner and Head Clients and Markets at KPMG in India. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us here today on India on the Move. India ranked about 12th in the world in terms of ultra HNI population at the beginning of the year. But of course, uh, that was then and 10 months down the line. Samrat, if I may begin by asking you, what has the overall impact of COVID-19 been on the estates of your HNI clients? Uh, are the losses only notional or are they being booked as yet? And are you witnessing a trend where you're seeing a lot of your HNI clients uh, wanting to liquidate their assets? Some of them wanting to use that uh, liquidity for reviving business? Uh, yes, we have seen uh, pick up in uh, traditional fixed income instruments. Uh, in the recent uh, past, and we, it's obviously because of the onset of the uh, aftermath of the COVID-19 situation of the pandemic. But uh, this move, I think, is just not because of uh, the COVID situation. I think uh, it's, it's in fact, uh, a lot of it because of the credit concerns which have been there since uh, 2018 uh, after the overall uh, fixed income crisis which were there. Uh, and since 2019, we've seen uh, overall, we've seen that the overall, uh, there's been a greater preference for accrual strategies focused on uh, AAA and PSU entities. Uh, answering your uh, other question in terms of uh, how's it been in terms of wealth erosion? Yes, I think uh, firstly, uh, to have the right risk for filing from a client standpoint is very critical. And I think for our clients, uh, from a risk profiling standpoint, uh, we are very, uh, you know, stringent in terms of the suitability assessments of our clients. Uh, we definitely gauge their uh, knowledge and experience and uh, try to, you know, uh, assess what exactly their needs are. And uh, further, we extend this to, you know, conducting regular product performance reviews. So that has helped us. And then in terms of our unique model of interaction where you have the relationship managers and the product specialist, and the overall dual care model has in a way helped our clients in terms of their uh, managing wealth and ensuring that you know we avoid any kind of wealth erosion right right okay let me also bring in rajesh give us a sense of what are the big emerging trends that you are seeing as far as hni's investing habits are concerned and is there a significant shift and is this shift likely to be long term um, asian crisis financial crisis political crisis and now COVID. I think the biggest difference uh, that I've noticed or we've noticed this time is the client maturity levels, especially in the uh, ultra HNI segment. There have been no sort of knee jerk reactions or panic to pull out uh, money or anything of that sort. Yes, investors may be pushing down fees or newer allocations may have got skewed towards fixed income. But clearly HNIs have come of age with regards building a long term financial portfolio and staying the course despite the volatility. And that really augurs well for the wealth management industry and reinforces uh, my belief that the size of the opportunity for the wealth business remains in, uh, intact. And the pandemic has not fundamentally altered the industry's long-term potential. Uh, if you look at uh, how people have reacted, I mean, you know, uh, there've been two types of impact, I would say. One, on the business front for many promoters, uh, you know, because clients have suffered losses at cash flow and PL level, 
on account of significant impact on revenues. Some of them have utilized their bank limits to take care of costs. Some have dug into their financial portfolios to see them through this period. And additional cash in the business has been put aside in safe investments like bank FDs or liquid funds. But when it comes to financial portfolios, especially, you know, the equity portfolio that have seen a solid mark to market impact, very few percentage of clients actually panicked and took a cash call. In fact, many have been smart enough to add into their equity portfolios after that first month of little bit of scare. So in a uh, in an era of liquidity and low interest rate, we've been advising clients that money will come into equities and emerging equities. So one should remain invested. Uh, we've also seen a good amount of uh, investments going into U.S. portfolios. We we've created a portfolio for clients uh, in uh, some of the best quality stocks in the U.S. There are allocations going towards gold since the last six months. Well, we've been in, uh, bullish on gold for the last one year, but in the last six months, uh, a large, uh, about 5 to 10% of the client's portfolio is getting allocated towards gold. Uh, on the fixed income side, of course, people have got uh, moved more towards safe uh, uh, you know, investments, be it tax-free bonds or absolute top-end credit-rated bonds. And lastly, we've seen a good amount of trend of money getting into technology through private equity funds. Uh, where uh, everyone understands post-COVID, uh, most of the companies have advanced their investments in technology by three to five years. So we are seeing trends in equities, in gold, in international investing, and in technology through private equity. Right. Okay. I'm going to pick up on that trend uh, in gold that you are seeing and ask Vikram also to add on. Traditionally, HNIs have always felt that gold and real estate are the safe investment options. Uh, you know, has the trend continued through COVID-19 uh, as the markets have also remained volatile? Also, isn't it a rather challenging time to make a fair assessment uh, of real estate valuations at this point in time? No, fair point. I think uh, the one point that I want to add is that this next generation in many families is far, are far more experimental than perhaps their patriarchs or matriarchs have been. So that has resulted in them looking at various alternatives. So while you talk about real estate and gold, I think uh, as, as my colleague panelists mentioned, whether it's private equity funds, whether it's alternate investment funds, whether it is family offices, whether it's overseas investments, uh, you, you find a bunch of alternatives that people are looking at. And this is pre-COVID and actually got accentuated post-COVID. Absolutely. Because what basically families look at today is a diversified pool of assets. Uh, and the fact that if you can invest in the US or other markets, and today regulations have been relaxed in terms of how much you can put every year, that gives you a good hedge because you know most people believe the dollar will appreciate over time against the rupee. So you already have that plus the fact that you can invest in stocks or instruments that are not currently available in India. So I think the experimentalization of uh, avenues for investment have increased significantly. Our family practice office sees uh, a lot of money going into startups now because they believe this is a good vintage uh, as companies come out of COVID. Rajesh, uh, like Vikram was saying earlier, there are those who were ancestrally rich or first generation entrepreneurs who are past their prime. And then there are the nouveau riche, uh, the, the young startup entrepreneurs, promoters of firms, there are celebrities, there are sports stars, actors. Now, uh, there's a whole mix of different kinds of HNIs and ultra HNIs uh, in India in particular. Uh, you know, how different are their investing habits? How different are their requirements from a wealth management company? How do you cater to all of these? Of course, the requirements are uh, different. Um, the new age entrepreneurs or the younger lot uh, uh, I find them taking, you know, much higher, uh, their ability to take risk is much higher and they're willing to experiment. Um, and we see a lot of trend towards direct investing in startups or investing in uh, markets outside India using the LRS route. Um, also, a lot of trends in, uh, you know, investing in venture cap funds, uh, which are investing, um, you know, in the technology sector or the pharma sector or the education sector. And there's huge amount of interest there. Of course, they, I, I believe they understand that uh, sector better. Maybe their education in the recent past or, you know, their uh, their network that they have uh, gives them a better ability to understand really what's going on there and, uh, you know, have confidence about taking that bet. 
while uh, the earlier lot i would say the older generation uh, still is more conservative believes in traditional investing has seen very good returns uh, you know just by remaining in simple vanilla products like equities over a long period of time um so there's a little bit of conflict uh, there's no right or wrong here but clearly the newer generation is willing to take a much higher risk by experimenting in alternate investments but uh, the appetite for that is clearly there with the younger lot right okay the appetite is clearly with the younger lot uh, samrat your point of view so in addition to what rajesh said i think uh, the other trend that we're seeing uh, with the younger lot is uh, you know finding a purpose with the investment and uh, they want to be associated with uh, certain sectors companies where they feel they can relate to where they find a purpose and it could be say some of the new trends that we're seeing is uh, in terms of uh, esg investing so in addition to just making money or making you know uh, uh, you know looking at capital appreciation they are also looking at a purpose when it comes to investing right interesting you mentioned that uh, the purpose bit and vikram i want to ask you to add on to that covid 19 has really uh, you know made us all want to give back to society a lot of hnis and ultra hnis have opened their heart have opened their purse strings and really contributed significantly to philanthropy uh, do you find that you know that trend particularly with young third fourth generation entrepreneurs of family businesses has really gone up also one more uh, point to add on the family office front do you find that succession planning today is uh, being done far more proactively death used to be a taboo subject in indian households uh, do you find that changing now no so first of all i think in terms of your point on purpose i think uh, clearly we are in a vuka world and and covid has told us that uh, that's really got families to get up and think in terms of what their passion is and we see whether it is sports whether it is education whether it is women empowerment big themes where families are willing to support and this is pre covid and i think it's got accentuated post covid to kind of push some of these agendas uh, in terms of your point on family settlements uh, we think covid is actually a trigger uh, people have realized the need to have a settlement in place given the uncertainty today uh, and we are seeing far more discussions uh, also you must remember that there are many groups today uh, have got the next generations in and they may not be completely aligned Uh, in terms of what the future is in the current state so we are seeing cross holdings being closed out and actually freed up so that will throw up great opportunities because then families will embark on what they want to do uh, that will mean potential monetization could be dilution you could get investors in you could ipo uh, basically frees up capital uh, and 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 basically value monetization so we think uh, family settlements uh, has picked up Uh, trusts are generally more preferred than will uh, simply because uh, trusts are for the passage of the asset uh, and are much more easier to resolve right all right on that note let's head into a short break right now on the other side we'll talk about the digitalization of wealth management and find out what are the big lessons that the pandemic has taught us in wealth management stay with us on cnbc tv <music> Standard Chartered and CNBC TV18 present India on the Move Season Four. Welcome back. You're watching Season Four of India on the Move, and today our focus is on wealth management and learnings from COVID-19. I want to start this segment by focusing a little bit on solutions. So let me come to you, Samrat. Uh, give us a sense of what are the kind of systems that you've put in place to prevent wealth erosion of your clients in these unprecedented times. So uh, I think, firstly, to have the right risk profiling of our clients is critical. uh and this includes a suitability assessment uh and getting to know the right knowledge and experience and uh, what is more important is that it needs to be monitored uh on a on using the right systems and support this further extends to conducting regular product uh, performance reviews and make it part of the relationship management process secondly uh offering unbiased solutions is central to building clients trust and comfort and at scb clients have uh, a comfort as we offer on by solutions and we have a very open or a completely open architecture uh, and we do not manufacture products uh, ourselves further our uh, uh, view is that you know we stick to providing uh, 
uh, house views which are very diverse from third party and as a result it leads to a very unbiased approach to uh, you know providing uh, advice uh, recommendations which are again married with unbiased solutions that we offer and uh, third the most important for us is the model that we follow which is that of a dual care where you have a perfect interaction between the client the relationship managers and the product specialists so that ensures that overall from taking all these three things in mind uh, we take into account that we have the right solution for the client and that has really helped us in these tough times right okay rajesh uh, you know i also want you to add on uh, like you were saying covid-19 has increased the use of technology like never before uh, how well digitalized are business models of wealth manager managers in india today what sort of tech innovations are holding you in good stead in these times this pandemic has uh, dramatically accelerated the pace of digitization as i mentioned maybe you know advanced it by 3 to 5 years especially related to things like client onboarding and engagement uh, to really enjoy a competitive advantage in this so called new normal a more digitally enabled business will be a key requirement and i think all wealth management firms including us are trying to see what are the various technologies we can use to make it a very seamless client experience uh, not only related to signing up a new client but reporting prospecting you know the whole advisory process because we find that there is a lot of unproductive time that anyway even before the pandemic was going off advisors uh, you know in administrative work uh, related to paperwork and documentation and i think a lot of that uh, we we just didn't have a choice once the pandemic hit us and we started working from home we had to find solutions around that and you know in the na- last 6 months we've been able to now on board every single client without having to visit him there are of course certain regulatory requirements where you have to get physical signatures but that aside most of the processes have got digitized so we've advanced our investment or our processes i would say by 3 to 5 years but uh, you know in our business i still believe that it will continue to remain a people relationship driven industry especially in the ultra hni segment because unlike the west uh, especially us and europe indians uh, still like to socialize they like to build relationships and meet people so we will need to build platforms and we will need to push digital channels to engage with clients now more than ever but it will be a hybrid approach human plus digital samrat you know how has overcoming these unprecedented events really improved the alpha for your client's portfolio i think it comes down to basic of sticking to your asset allocation and uh, staying invested during the volatile times uh, let me uh, take two examples uh, in 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 2020 so the overall equity correction uh, which we seen say from uh, january to march where the nifty uh fell 38% you know between the peak and the trough uh we've seen this is the quickest in the history after the great depression but the sharp fall in equity asset uh, class has in fact even spooked even the most seasoned investors and clients did reach out to redeem and move to save for assets but managing emotional bias is a is a key during these times and as getting out at the bottom could erode the significant wealth that was created for some of these clients so i think for keeping that in mind i think uh, the best is to ensure that the clients maintain their equity allocations and as history has suggested that such sharp falls result in great entry points for investors and uh, you know vikram while today's financial system is far more resilient than ever before how is the asset management practice globally really adding agility to itself uh, you know what are the silver linings that you see uh, this disruption of covid-19 has brought about for the practice uh, as a whole yeah, so you know ironically we think covid-19 is a catalyst for the whole asset management business and that really stems from uncertainty so right from monetization to actually wealth management Uh, we see a big shift and in the indian market i think the fact is that today promoters are far more willing to sell out than before the number of control transactions in the last 24 months is evidence of that now where does that money go right and i think as we discussed earlier the fact that many next generation folks want to actually do different avenues of investment i think that really gives a big impetus 
to the asset management and wealth management business going forward. All right. Well, we are running out of time from this episode, so I'm going to give each one of you 30 seconds to leave us with that one big lesson that you think this pandemic has taught us in terms of wealth management. Rajesh, if we can start with you. Lesson uh, as a firm really is to, uh, uh, I would say, digitization and ensuring that uh, you focus on finding solutions to serve your uh, customers digitally. And for clients, it's been, uh, the lesson has been asset allocation, discipline of asset allocation and remaining only in quality, be it equities or fixed income. All right, Vikram, what about you? For us, it's really been uh, quality of portfolio. I think that's key. Uh, and the fact that post COVID, which are the businesses that are going to change dramatically? And I think focusing on them because we do expect some serious winners on the back of COVID-19. Right. Samrat, your big lesson from the pandemic? Uh, I think uh, stick to basics. Asset allocation, stick to it. Stick to your risk profile and continue to invest basis that. All right. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen, for taking our time and joining us today and sharing those very valuable insights. Uh, as we close this episode, perhaps I'd like to leave you with a thought from Warren Buffett. He once said that if you don't find a way to make your money work while you sleep, you will be working until the day you die. Perhaps uh, he was referring to finding the most ideal wealth manager. And especially in these times, wealth management is crucial. Thank you, gentlemen, for taking out time and joining us. That's a wrap on this edition of India on the Move. We'll be back next time. Goodbye. Standard Chartered and CNBC TV 18 present India on the Move, Season 4. Innovate. Enable.